Hey folks, Kwame here. I'm just doing a bit of an impromptu tutorial because when I got up this morning, I saw Twitter had released their Threads app. It's like their um, Instagram version of Twitter. I thought it was pretty cool. I went and signed up. I went and I created my account uh, at Kwame and .co. Actually, let me just plug it in and show you. So, and as you see, when I add that social link to my site it's just got the default icon there in the header it's got it there down at the bottom in the footer where i use the social links block hey it's a recent update and we can't always expect immediate 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 utility of the of the icons and i've noticed this on a few other platforms like even on facebook when i was updating my facebook page they have the YouTube, Instagram icons, but they don't have the threads icon yet. So I thought, okay, what's the way of replacing it? And a lot of people, when, you know, when TikTok came out, they did the easy thing of basically just replacing with an image. So they'd go into the custom CSS, they'd target this block up here, they'd use a, what's it called? A, a pseudo element and like a little PNG and blah, blah, blah. Not a true solution, right? Because if I just right click on these icons here, so I got my code, uh, I've got my inspect tool up, you'll notice they have this fill of cu current color here, right? And there. Let's say I change that to red and oops, just make it important for simplicity. There you go. I can change that color and all of them change and they're consistent. And obviously there are theme settings. So for example, they were uh, black by default because they're inheriting the color of the text as you would kind of hope they do for the theme. If I had a black background and all the text was white, they would do the same. When you're using a SVG solution, when you're using a PNG, obviously that's not gonna work the same. So you end up having multiple versions and it's things to keep track of. Also, when you're doing it with social blocks, you have a similar issue. In fact, what tends to happen is you end up having to target all the different blocks and things, and it just gets a little bit annoying. So I figured, do you know what? Let's just use some JavaScript instead. So I'm gonna head over to developer tools, and then I'm gonna go into my code injection, and I'm here at the bottom of my footer injection. And so here's kind of my idea. There, on that icon, is a SVG element. If I remove that and replace it with a threads icon, that's an SVG element, I can get it to act the same as the others. And I can do that for the social block at the bottom as well. I can use the same icon for both so it's consistent. And then, yeah, I have one bit of code and I have to do minimal extra work. Obviously this requires a business plan, but I think it's gonna work quite well. You're gonna to have to bear with me because I'm kind of working this out as I go, but I think it's gonna work pretty well. So, okay, step one, and I kind of already cheated, I did this. Uh, in another tab, I have this. Oop, click the right window. I went to Seek Logo, I found a PNG, sorry, a SVG version of their icon. I downloaded it and I got this. I gave it a little right click to inspect it. And there's the code for the SVG. I right click and edit HTML, copy all of this, and then I can close this window and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna say let uh, threads, I oop, let's get the spelling right, threads icon equal, and then I'm gonna use a single quote and the reason being that there's double quotes in here. And then I'm gonna close with a semicolon. So now I've said whenever I refer to threads icon, I'm gonna get my threads icon. Cool. Actually, let's and let's annotate this code. Um, define threads icon. Cool. Next thing. So my steps are gonna be um, find elements to replace. Yeah. And spell. Uh, I'm going to add a class, a class to them. I'm going to remove the old icon. 
I'm going to insert a insert new icon. Those are going to be my four steps. So first thing, find the element using plain JavaScript uh, because you could use jQuery. And I know most browsers are good enough, but let's just keep this as accessible as I can. Document query selector all. Hopefully I've spelled everything correctly. I'm going to open a bracket, single quote. Now I happen to know the names of the elements, but let's just right click up here and inspect again. They are all part of this, the header actions right, and in this case, it's the header actions action social. I'm gonna nab that. Oop, let's put a period first because I'm taking class. And I'm gonna open square brackets, do href because I want a link. I'm gonna do a star equals, and I'm gonna open my double quotes. I'm gonna say threads.net. Close my quotes, close my square brackets. Then I'm going to put a comma because I also want to uh, target my social links down at the bottom. So let's inspect these. And for these, I'm just going to find the block type, which is up here. Uh, let's go with the SQS block social accounts links V2. That'll do fine. Uh, period again to select it, and then I can copy this and reuse it. Close my single quote and close my brackets. So what this is going to do is it's going to find all the social blocks and all of these header socials, and within them it's going to find the link to the threads icon. Uh, sorry, threads. Uh, threads.net, any icon that's got that. And then it's, well, let's think what we want to do next. Uh, for each of them, I want to find that element and I want to do some stuff. So let's do uh, four, four each elements. I'm opening some brackets, element, do the funky little arrow, and I'm going to open up some curly brackets. And yeah. OK, so what do I want to do for each of them? First thing is this. I'm going to add a class. This is for no reason other than the fact that, I don't know, maybe I want to add some styling later, and I want to have that option. So for the element, I'm going to open up the class list, and I'm going to add, and um, let's call it social icon and underscore threads. I like this naming convention. Kind of borrowing it from a client first. So find, find those blocks and the header icons up here. For each of them, for each element that's got the link in it, add this class. Then I want to remove the old icon. So let's say let old icon equal element. Yeah. Query selector. Actually, we don't need select all. We just do query selector. We're going to find the SVG element inside it, like so. So old icon within the element, find the SVG. And then if it exists, so just if old icon, we're going to, oh, actually, sorry, what am I doing? If old icon, got to put it in brackets. Then we do old icon, uh, and we're going to remove it. So, cool. Next step, insert the new icon. So for that element that we've identified, which is the one with the link in it. Uh, we're going to insert adjacent HTML. We're going to open the brackets, single quote, after begin, Ooh, close that, comma, threads icon. Close the curly brackets first, and the circle brackets, and then put a semicolon. And I think that's right. Let's save it. Let's hope this has worked. <laughs> I've probably made a typo, but let's get, oh, no, worked perfectly. Sweet. No flicker. Let's check down the bottom. Yeah, that threads icon's there. Let's inspect again. Do what we did earlier. So let's change this current color on the SVGs to, um, let's just do, sorry, it's being a little bit annoying. Uh, not letting me select any of you, are we? Icon, fill, SVG, 
and we're going to do fill red important oh great they're all working the sizing looks good though i suppose it looks like that threads icon really fills right up to the top so potentially let's just give this a click here so i've selected the threads icon one uh, let's give it just this one a padding two pixels See, that works, but then I guess we need to also do box sizing for the box. There we go. So let's go add that to our CSS. Now, this is just because this particular icon basically doesn't have any top or bottom padding on it. So something I've just noticed now, as I said, this is a little bit impromptu. If you get a different version of the icon, it might be better sized. But as you see, that works perfectly. And oh yeah, because I did this class down here, social icon threads, I can style it individually. I can show you something cool with that. So bear with me for two seconds and let's go to CSS. Okay, so we're over here in custom CSS. I'm gonna put this right at the top because, well, I like to do that when testing because it means if I've got anything janky going on with the CSS below, then it will not work, <laughs> or if I've got anything else affecting things. So first thing I'm gonna do, let's just put a little comment. Uh, what do we call this? Style threads icon for consistency. And we called it social dash icon underscore threads. Open some curly brackets. It's a class, so I'm using a period. Let's save that and let's refresh the frame. Yep. As you can see, it's too large once again. So let's target it. Cool. Now, social icon threads is the name. Let's do the padding first. Uh, let's just say 10 pixels. And we can definitely see that's working. I like the idea of two pixels, but I also like working in rem. So I'm going to do that as a rem value two divided by 16 each that's one divided by eight that's 0.125 maths is still working there you go that still doesn't look perfect and it's because we needed that border box isn't it so let's do border oh sorry not border box box sizing and we're going to do border box cool that's sized it in nicely just tidy up my CSS there. That looks pretty good. Let's double check though that that's worked for the social icons down here too. And yeah, that looks pretty consistent. Now, obviously I've used big, large, extra large style social icons here. You might wanna mess with that padding Differently, you might want to style it further. So the great thing being, if I wanted it set up for these social icons extra large, I can just select their parent, grab this part of the CSS, target that class, copy this, make sure there's a space that separates them. We don't need to redo box sizing. And um, let's just test it. Let's say one rem. Ooh, what's going on here? Let's right click and let's have a look. So as you can see, the padding's there, but because it is, um, one moment, because the SVG is set to absolute, it's just covering over it. So for these, you might have to mess around with them a little bit more. I mean, I could really lazily, if you put it to relative, you can see it totally messes things up there. Um, you know what? Let's troubleshoot this while we're at it. So my thought would be because that's already got a margin on the side and because the SVG is set to absolute, probably the best way to do this would be to set that as relative 
let's say reduce this to 0.1 rem. There you go. So we would have to, as a solution, also add in rid of that double bracket. Uh, we'd also have to target the SVG directly within the social media block and then make sure it's position relative. Oop, sorry. Make sure it's position relative and then adjust the padding and maybe not as far up as over one rem, but maybe make that 0.4 and you see that's adjusting the sizing. So yeah, there you go. Bit of a long-winded explanation, a little bit of a long-winded video, but I hope this is helpful. I hope this is useful for some folks who want to play around. As I say, you know, having this additional class just makes it that little bit quicker and a little bit more human readable. So if I wanted to do anything funky, for example, I'm just going to delete this bit here. Um, I could just do social icon threads. SVG, open my curly brackets, uh, fill red, and oops. did I forget something there? Let's check. It's probably got more specific. Um, ah, yeah, that's one other point. Probably want to use an important, or you could probably just take this, to be honest because it's more specific. I'm going to be super lazy in my solution here and just throw in an important and it'll work. Then you can also do funky things like this. So for example, social icon threads, let's put this here, uh, social icon threads, pull on hover. And we want just for that icon, when it's hovered, it will transform, translate, y minus one rem well, let's, let's do minus 50 percent actually i'll jump can add a little transition here and let's just say uh transform one second linear it'll slowly rise up and down but it won't affect the others and you can do all sorts with this. I mean, you could modify my code so that it targets specific links, adds a little class to each of them. Uh, you can replace, use it to replace others with custom icons, so on and so forth. Anyway, hope this has been useful. Again, if you like it, you know, drop a comment, ask your questions, maybe even subscribe. And if anyone has any questions for other tutorials, if I get a moment, maybe I'll be able to take them. You can always buy me a coffee as an extra thanks, but otherwise, yeah, enjoy building and designing your websites.